Hey YouTube, hey, uh, this is Prometheus guys giving you uh, a breakdown once again of me using this Dime 146 Oki Roll Eagle 3 base defense uh, and how I go ahead and blend in um, other defenses uh, to confuse my opponents and, and, and get potential stops. You know, when you play next generation Madden uh, in Madden 23 and obviously going to 24, uh, getting stops is really hard to do. So if you get one or two stops and you have ice cold offense, you can definitely go ahead um, and um, essentially win a lot of games. Now, I want to let you know I'm not going against any kind of bum. Um, this guy is ranked 133. Um, has roughly about 1,900 games underneath his belt. Uh, so, you know, a little bit over a 500 player, but when you play you know, almost 2,000 games um, in a season, you know how to play the game. And this guy had a, a really good offense. Uh, he had his reads down and stuff like that. Uh, and he was a smart player. Uh, so you're going to see how I use this defense to, to kind of confuse him and get some stops against him. So uh, once again, we're going to be f focusing on the crossfire as one of my base defenses. Uh, single back wing pair uh, in this type of situation. Um, and then what I do is typically when I see, when I run against someone for the first time and he's a heavy set, I want to have a defense that's actually going to go ahead and have pretty good defense uh, or is going to be good against the run. So he's got, you know, uh, you know uh, multiple tight ends. He's got his running back. Uh, my goal is to make sure I've got run fits. Uh, so I've got a couple of guys that are not playing run fits and it's going to be these 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 uh, outside defenders that are not playing run fits, but everybody else is going to be in run fits with the cover four and uh, because actually he's running to the strength of the uh, of the field I'm going to take my user and usually user right over the center and this and, and go out to the outside or to the other side uh, to take away the reads so um, you can see right here uh, he actually jumps into it I've got cover cover four uh, he does a play action and basically what this guy was doing and this is old school man in which previous Maddens you could you, you could you can never stop the rollout this guy would basically do play actions and then he'd roll out and wait for the play to break down that's his entire offense um, he had some pretty good good some good like glitchy plays that he used on offense and stuff like that so this guy had like a scheme he had go-to plays you can see right here uh, he basically takes off this quarterback with the blocking, he picks up nothing. So right there, cover four against the, the, the play action sprint halfback flat. Runs in the same formation again. He doesn't flip the play. So once again, I jump into cover three. So one of the things I do with this cover three, and this is essentially, it's a, it's a crossfire blitz. Um, it kind of messes up the blocking. I, what I like to do is I take, take my edge defenders and I put these guys into hook zones. Because they have, uh, because of the way I run my defense, they have some matching principles and stuff like that. And I'm gonna, ha I have free reign with my user with this defense. So I can pretty much float wherever I want to and take away his reads. My responsibility is to play this box right here, and then look for anybody that's crossing over um, and carry with those crossers. But what these these hook zones are gonna do is just kind of slow things up a little bit, and then you have matching principles. So really on this side, I only have one wide receiver threat. I'm just hoping this hook zone kind of floats up if anybody comes over. Um, and then I'm gonna kind of carry with that. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what he does on this offense right here. He goes a running play. Uh, and uh, he gets a nice little block, but that's I, I don't like his running lanes. He, like he didn't have really good running lanes even though he picked up like you know five yards on that particular play. So back at it right here, he goes with the trend set. And this is where I jump into, co into cover, four, uh, cover two shell. So I've got soft squats right here, and then I've got these guys that match, and then I've got my, my, my single high safeties and stuff like that. And what I found is that this guy comes off the edge clean. Now, this guy, the, the opponent I'm running against actually made fairly good reads. My job is essentially play the box right here, and I'm looking for three. So I'm looking for the third player that's going to come across when I'm running this defense. Um, and let's see what he does with this. I think he actually runs the ball and he destroys my 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 blocking my, my guys um, with the run. So I believe that's what happens with it. He does run and he gets really good seal blocking in that type of situation. Um, anytime I ran cover two against this guy, he just ate it up. Um, he did throw to me a little bit. So now he actually runs in it. And this is one of the reasons why um, I like to have this cover three shell. Uh, the cover three is better at the run, and you can see I shifted my guys off to this line right here because uh, he no huddled. He obviously saw something. So now, since I have cover, since I have a, you know, I'm using a cover three. 
this is going to essentially get myself another blocker. And I don't think I make any kind of adjustments whatsoever. So I'm saying, hey, man, if you want to run this way, that's fine. I've got, you know, basically these defenders right here. And I'm going to shoot this gap if you want to go this wide. But I'm going to go ahead and take away this left side because the defense is a little bit weaker. And right there, it just jumbles up his line. He's got no blocking right there. So second and nine, he goes ahead and no huddles again. And this is think of where I go into cover two. Do I go? No, I go into cover three. But now I go ahead and hook these guys up. So I put these guys in hooks. And you can see I'm making these adjustments really quick because this guy's actually trying to go ahead and quick hike me uh, in this type of situation. So he goes into play action. Um, so I've got my hook zone right here. He goes out. This is his whole his whole offense. This guy's got you know over 2,000 games played. My job is to I've got these hook zones. My job is to carry uh, and take away his outside read. The only thing with the hook zones is that I don't have any kind of an outside defender. But let's go ahead and see what he does right here. He throws it to this guy right here, and I've got two defenders in the area. And I think what happened is I clicked this guy on. Um, because he was rolling out, and that actually pulled the defender out of position. And But he actually makes a play at the ball. So he's going to come back to that play again a little bit later and get away with one. But you can see he uses a play action wide boot sale uh, as one of his base plays. Now he goes into tight formation. And when I see tight formations, typically I like to run cover two, um, my cover two match scheme, because it usually messes up a lot of players. And um, right here, he just hits me with simple mesh. I have to take the spot route. This is my, my responsibility, playing the middle defender. Um, he hits the crosser on the backside, and I have a missed tackle by Baker. So Gray breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, uh, just bad stick by me, and gets the ball down. So, but that, 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 that offense was pretty much locked up, so I don't, really, I don't mind that too much. I just had a broken tackle, and you're going to get that type of animation when you're going against the Kansas City Chiefs. So back at it again right here. Um, he just hits me with an inside run. I didn't set it up correctly, and he gets a touchdown on it. I uh, actually go. This guy play. He he did two point conversions the entire game. So um, he's in slot. I form slot flex. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go with a heavy set. So I'm gonna get out of my base defense. I'm gonna go with a heavy set. I want to make sure that he doesn't have any uh, push on my defensive line. And I think what I did is I just ran with it. Just sent a standard um, cover two shell. So cover two shell. Go ahead and I'm gonna close up the box a little bit. Um, clearly he didn't like that look. Uh, because I think what he did is he took a timeout and actually going to come back and haunt him. So now I go into a bare front. I want to go ahead and, and make sure I take out these tackles right here. I'm going to have a guy right here, a guy right here, and then I'm going to use this to take away, and I've got essentially the heavy side set. So these gaps are all filled up, and I think I took these guys and put these in flats because I want them to react to the run. I'm not really worried about this guy actually hitting the outside. I want them to actually go ahead and play run fit. So that's how I set this up. So you can see, no, actually, let me see if I go ahead and make an adjustment on this. Um, I do come back to, let's see if I play my play art. No, I didn't get a chance to, to show you my play art, but typically what I want to do is I'm going to put flats out there and take away. But this is a huge critical play right here. This, this uh, you know, two-point conversion puts him in a situation where he's not up on me by one point. So um, back on defense again, a uh, minute and eight seconds. Um, this guy had a pretty effective offense. Look, he's on the 25-yard line. This is this is the, the offensive formation I had a hard time with. So basically what he would do is he would take one of these wide receivers and motion him, motion him over, and then he would actually have kind of like an underneath flood concept that he would actually hit. So I didn't see this formation yet, um, so you'll see, me, you'll see me, him working that against me. Um, I just figured I'd go with some type of a, a contained blitz because he was rolling out with his guys. So that's why I went with the contained blitz on the outside. He motions this guy over. You can see, look at this. He's got this guy coming out. He's got him coming up, and then he's got a running back underneath. And it just there's no defenders in the area. So he just he basically you know picks um, the guy that he wants to go with. And he drops it underneath and actually picks up some pretty good yards right there. So that's actually good design play. No huddles. Back at it again. He motions this guy over. Goes back at, at the same read. But now he's got this guy. He's got this guy a little bit further out. So it's just kind of like a slant underneath. And right here he picks up another 10 yards. And he's motioning, motioning or just running the ball down. Or just 
you know, basically running the clock down. Now I go into cover two because I want to have a flat out here. I want a hook, and then I've got this guy. And my responsibility is to take this, this motion guy or whoever the three is coming underneath. So now I jump into cover two. And I try to go and take that away. Look what he does. He comes right back to the other area because of the way these guys are falling back. And he throws right over my defender into the seam. So this guy works this, this offensive scheme before. Uh, he obviously knows what he's doing as far as his reads are concerned because uh, he came back to it again. He jumps into this particular play um, and actually hit me in the seam area right there. So that's a really good design of the play. Um, and it was really hard. I don't know why he just didn't. Maybe he just he saves this offense for when he needs to move move the ball quickly. So that kind of makes sense. Now he goes into the wing flex close. This is a, a formation I was having some problems with before. I go ahead and actually look at man coverage, but then I switched it out. I think I jumped into basically cover uh, cover four, playing the sticks. And right here, he throws the sidelines. My sixth defender just kind of sits here and doesn't carry to the sideline. And that's what, when you, when you play cover four, you want to do hard flats and then play sticks uh, to get those guys to play out the sidelines. So I didn't make that adjustment, hard flat adjustment, playing the sticks to get the sidelines. And he abused me right on the sidelines and gets, uh, gets the ball down to the 23 with 16 seconds left and he's got no timeouts now if i get one stop against this guy he's in some serious trouble so right here i go into cover two once again this is i think the third time i've jumped into cover uh, cover two and my responsibility is to take any three guy that actually comes over the middle of the field so i'm playing the middle of the box and looking for the three um, on this side so let's go ahead and take a look at this i've got the matching principles uh he goes into play action and uh, basically what I want to do is, is take away those, those routes right there. He only runs a couple different routes. And uh, look at this defender. This defender is just, just playing stupid. The ball is right there. He doesn't actually play it. Uh, he gets the ball right down on the one, end, uh, one yard line. Uh, and that's the reason I kind of pulled out is because I wanted to come back to that one guy. Um, but he actually plays the sideline like that. So back at it right here. Well, one yard line, he's got 10 seconds. If I get one stop against this guy, he's pretty much over with. So I'm an anticipating he's actually going to throw the ball in this type of situation because if he throws the ball, he has two or three shots in the end zone opposed to running the ball because if he runs the ball, comes up short, he loses his scoring opportunity altogether. So you know this is why you got to pay attention to timeouts, time management, because that's going to help you determine what type of thing that your opponent's going to do. And if, they, if he decides to run the ball, that's just a bad decision. It's just a high-risk uh, uh, decision. He's, he wants to come away with some points. So right here I go with hard flats, and then I also do another flat guy over here off to the side. And the reason why is I want to have something that's going to run, uh, play fits. And then what I did is, is a cubic, cubic contain because this guy keeps rolling out uh, light, right or left, really off to the right the entire time with his reads. So I'm going to go ahead and do the box up. You can go ahead and take away his run threat. Um, and what he does is he throws right in, into my cloud flat right here. So I do get an interception because he didn't really read that type of situation. And I'm going to off to the races and try to go ahead and pick up a block with my guy. Um, Scandling is 94 speed, I think. A 95 speed, he's able to go and catch me uh, and get not give me an opportunity to score a touchdown. So if I would have scored a touchdown, that would have been a huge play. So... Uh, next series, Q uh, the quarter three here. Um, basically, I'm going to go ahead and just use this base defense. Uh, he doesn't run the ball, but look at this, the quick little check down to the running back. Uh, that was actually my area that I had to go after. Now he goes ahead and does no, no huddle. And let's go ahead and see if I set the defense up. So I'm doing some hook zones, uh, trying to do some matching principles. And I'm going to use this guy right over the middle of the field. And my box is just right here. And I'm going to let him go ahead and try to hit me on the sidelines. I have no problem with that at all. Um, one other adjustment is to, to go ahead and QB spy my guys right here. But you can see uh, he throws at my defender, and my defender does not, doesn't do anything against him. Um, and, you know, basically the guy didn't jump the route at all. So I got away with one right there. But now he's this guy's just feeling some pressure. He feels like he's going to have to don't huddle me. Uh, but that's what the good thing about having a defensive scheme where you can show your opponent the same look every time every time is that they can't necessarily read what you're looking to do so once again he goes he goes with this route i think he's got uh, basically a flood concept 
This guy's going over the middle. He's clearing out, and I think he's got an underneath route right here with the running back. And um, Flood Concept actually gets matched. Now, even though he's out of position, he does get matched, and these guys match up a little bit and take away these reads. The guy over the top's over the middle, and I'm actually going ahead and trailing, and this guy's kind of floating up. So he's probably trying to look to this route, but he didn't like my user, and he didn't like this guy floating back. Uh, so I have to keep. Tr I went ahead and sent my spy in this type of situation, and I've got to take away his his check down read. And since he sees me doing that, um, I go ahead and tackle him for a five yard gainer. So he would take off this quarterback, and this is one of the few times he goes off the left side. But you can see he just he's running these plays stock. Now I jump into basically the cover three blitz. I think I leave the stock, and I think what I did is I put these guys at the sticks just to go ahead and give him to, just a kind of a different look um, and I don't really have any kind of a crazy threat out here so I can have this safety roll out to the deep third um, but I don't have to worry about any, him getting beat over the middle of the field so right here I just stay with this defense and I think what he did is actually jumped into a running play so he went back into uh, this running play right here gets really good blocking in that type of situation um, and actually gets the first down with it. No huddles again. So in other words, you get these guys at the nodal hall, and I know he sees something. So now I'm going to jump into this different variation of cover three. And let's see if I move my line over a little bit. No, nope, I don't move it over. But now he's got uh, an underneath route here. He's got this. He's got a crossing route. And I think there's a whip, and then I think there's a corner route with this particular concept. So, yeah, it, it, that's basically what he did. I have to user away this guy. And um, he actually checks down underneath. And because I've got defenders down here, they're actually going to contain, this, uh, contain this, this running back. But his running back actually makes a pretty good stick and beats both of my guys and gets a first down. So that's, you know, smart players check down. Check down, check down. Don't try to go ahead and push the ball deep. Get what the give. You know, take what the defense gives to you and check down because he just he got a first down off of that particular play. So now he uses the same formation, flips it, and I decided to go and run into man coverage. So I've been showing this guy's zone, showing his zone. Now I'm going to go ahead and do flat seams. So if he does run the ball, um, I'm going to have run fits pretty much across the board. I've, I've got this deep middle guy that's uh, over the middle of the field. And I want to go ahead and see how he reacts to it. So he goes, does a rollout to this side and my responsibility is obviously since he's doing rollouts and he's actually just rolling people out this way I've got to carry with his rollout and then I've got a spy that I can send um, in this type of situation so here's my threat right here I've got that bottle he's got a man I've got a man over top of it I've got a man over the over the bottom I send the spies he doesn't know what to do with the ball he freezes a little bit and then as a result, the semi-spies and those spies actually go ahead and sack them for, uh, for, for, uh, for a loss of three yards. So you know huddles again. So this guy was no huddling because he knows what to do with his, deep, his, his offense. Right here, I go into just a basic cover four. I'm playing the sticks. So I've got these guys dropping back at the sticks. And um, let's see what he's doing. He uses the same, pretty, same, same play again. So he's got a little whip route. I think he's got a corner. He's got a sail route, he's got a seam route, and then he's got a check down. He misses the seam. Seam was open. This is open. He could have, if he passed light it this way, he probably would have got a it probably would have got a touchdown. Just because you can get away with that with Mahomes. Mahomes has got a you know just a, a phenomenal arm. But I think what he does is he checks it down, and because I've got this guy, you know, at at the sticks, he comes down. And fortunately for me, this time, actually, this guy actually got a good tackle right here and actually hold, uh, hold him to a six-yard gainer. So third and seventh situation. So go into cover two. This, is, this play was not working for me the entire time. Uh, just wasn't working for me. Um, and, I, you know, basically I've got a threat right here. I've got a threat right here. Um, if this guy goes this way uh, or this way, I've got to basically match up to the running back. And then this guy should match here. This guy should match here. My responsibility is to play this box right here. I got to play in between the hashes. And um, what he does is uh, he just quick snaps the ball, I think. He makes one adjustment. And you can see how this guy actually is floating out. 
I've got this guy um, coming here, um, floating out. He throws it right at my user, and my user is just stuck. Doesn't do anything in this type of situation. See how he actually kind of moves out of the way? I don't, I don't know why he moved out of the way, but he did uh, at Kelsey. And, the, you know, those, those are kind of like crazy animations that frustrate you with the game. Like, they don't go into the ball, they go away from the ball. Uh, a lot of times. So he's able to go ahead and get a completion like that, throwing at my user. My user does not make any kind of defense at that. Hits me once again with another inside zone. He gets the ball into the red zone, um, and he's down by two points. So in this type of situation, he goes for it. Um, he goes into this formation, this, this bunch formation. And then he's got his underneath route, and he's got his other route right here. He's going to motion a guy across basically overloading the side so I've got the responsibility to take away the third person look what he does with this play this is really really smart um, I try to take away the run I'm gonna go with a heavy set and um, in this type of situation I'm, I'm going ahead and just seeing okay so this guy's coming down this guy's coming down so I'm gonna play some hard flats and look what he does with this good play he's got a back route on the back side and I'm over here he's got this area wide open for an easy completion uh, and gets a touchdown against my defense. So the threat of the run was real. Um, I probably could have ran into a different type of a defense, but I just I just figured, you know, don't give myself a, you know, don't give that up. So I'm up by eight points against this guy. Uh, he's got to drive. He, not only does he have to get the ball in the end zone, he also has to basically score two-point conversion. So he's got to score tw twice in this drive in the red zone um, to basically beat me. So um, he's running a heavy set. I'm going to go ahead and put a hook zone over here to the left side. He decides to go ahead and do a run off to the right side, and I get a nice little block shit tackle. But look, he goes into, uh, he's using this dive alert smoke I form formation. So once again, I'm just trying to stay with my defense. Um, I keep, I, I push my line off the left, my defensive tackle off the left, and he's running the ball off to the right. Smart play. This guy's, he's, he's, he's seen. Um, issues with the way I'm running my defense and he's exposing it so he's no huddling into that he's also milking the clock this guy wants to go ahead and have the last uh, opportunity he doesn't want to give me any kind of opportunity with my offense so right here once again I go ahead and jump into man version of this run and you can see I get some pretty good block sheds right there one of the things I did with this man version is I was actually spying up this guy if I could get the adjustment I want to go ahead and spy this guy up because he's going to come down and play that run. So let's go ahead and see if I got cute. Yeah. So basically I went into cover three right now with the anticipation that he's going to go ahead um, and th throw the ball. So I went into cover three. Um, I'm really not worried too much about any kind of a threat with this wide receiver or this receiver. So I've got basically three guys um, playing. I've got, you know, seam coverage. And then I've got some type of flat coverage over here. And my responsibility is to do this. And if he wants to wheel his running backs out, um, I'll be willing to take that because he's, he's running out of time right now. He needs to move the ball down the field, and he can't be hitting flats all day. So he goes with another run play right here, uh, finds the hole, and picks up a lot of yards off that. But if he keeps running the ball, that's fine. I have no problem with it. So now he goes into a trips formation. So he's got a wide receiver here, here, and here. And then he's got basically your running back, and then he's got a backside guy. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the defense of what I run into. Um, uh, I think what I was in is a cover three, and he's just running a common stick play. So he's just got a guy out here. He's got stick. He's got a, a backside and a flat. But he just he can't. He just always goes wherever he runs to. He just looks at his progressions from there. Um, I had to go ahead and send the spy because he's going to go and take off this quarterback. And as he's, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about, I've got two guys to defend right here. Not a very good defense because I've got these deep thirds with these thirds, which is good because this this guy's out of commission. I've got the sideline guy that's probably going to go ahead and take away the sideline, but I have to go ahead and cover both of these guys up. Send the spy. And I have to go ahead and f carry and then come down to this guy. So really good reading progression by him just using that basic stick play uh, to Kelsey to go ahead and do that. But you can see um, he's he, now he's in a situation. One really strange thing, he actually spikes the ball opposed to taking a timeout. I don't necessarily like that. 
Um, but this guy's played almost 2,000 games, so there's obviously a logic behind it. Now he goes into the offense that I was having a hard time with. So he's going to motion one of these guys over, and he's going to essentially flood the underneath. And then he's also showed me that he's going to hit people over the backside. So I think in this type of situation, I'm running with a cover four, and I'm just going to go ahead and play the sticks. Because if I'm tackling him um, underneath the stick markers, that's not going to put him in a good situation. But I also don't want to get beat deep. So then I jump into cover three. I've got the, the hook zone. And these guys, that kind of flood the area. And then I have to look for anything that's crossing over the middle of the field. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, let's see what we do. All right, so hits a little seam right here. I don't know why I got myself out of position, but you had a route that dipped in and then uh, flipped out and that actually got inside the positioning of this guy right here so that's actually just really good developing but you know my user should be out here but i think because i slid out he felt like he couldn't hit bad on the backside. so he was basically had a couple different reads uh, that he was looking at right here actually completed that ball right there so that was a very it's a very interesting scheme that he's using and that was back to this um, 83 halfback choice, um, you know, uh, play formation. This is the formation I was having a hard time with. Uh, he just seemed like he could just easily go ahead and get really easy plays against me. So now I go jump back at this particular play again, but now I'm running into man coverage. So I've got manned up guys. And then also what I did is I took my outside defenders and put them into seam flats. And I'm going to use her this guy, and I've got a guy over the top of the field. So he's not going to be able to hit me over the middle of the field. He quick snaps this play, and you can see right here he's got nowhere to go with it. And I've got this one guy going out here. He's trying to go ahead and break everything down, but everything's just bottled up. Nowhere to go with a particular ball. Um, everybody thinks everything's bottled up. He actually goes ahead and gets a completion. So second attempt situation, he goes back to his money formation. Same situation, doing some seam fat, flats. I got a, a high a high zone right here. Everybody else is manned up. But look what happens when he motions the guy over. He motions this guy over, nobody's manning him. So he's unmanned. So I'm seeing that he's unmanned. I've got a double team over here. Um, so this guy's completely locked up because now it switches up a double team. This guy's actually doing this and I've got my flat. I have to prioritize my defense on him. I can't let this guy, wherever he goes, I got to go. So that, that eliminate, eliminates some of my options, but I have to go and carry with Hardman. And you can see um, right here, he actually tries to go and complete, completes the ball uh, to the running back underneath uh, on an angle route. That was a good completion, but he takes he finally takes the timeout. So the one thing I could say about this guy, his, his clock management was really, really bad. Um, he chewed the clock down as much as possible. Maybe this is what you guys would consider was smart or good. Personally, I, I don't think it was that great, uh, but uh, he, he does clock, you know, he did really, he did very risky clock management as far as taking a clock away. Now he does have two timeouts um, and basically time for maybe about three, four, maybe five plays total. But uh, it just seems very risky to me. So now let's go ahead and see. Go ahead back into cover three. I'm going to do, uh, you know, cloud flats. And I'm going to play the middle of the box and let him beat me um, on the sidelines and stuff like that. I think I might have got in a QB contained adjustment here. But he tries to run the ball once again. He's going to go ahead, go out to the outside. And I've got to go ahead and carry to the outside. So those are my adjustments that he's doing. Fortunately for me, I've got this guy that actually comes down here and actually plays this. These guys are coming down uh, and playing this guy, and I'm, I'm carrying with this guy over off to the right. He has nowhere to go with it, and I actually tackle him for a sack. Even though it's out of bounds, I get a sack right there, second and 13 or 15. So now I jump into a play that I haven't really showed him too much. And what I did with this figure play is I played the sticks. So I've got these guys playing sticks. I left the defensive uh, defensive tackle to play the sticks, and this guy's going to play the sticks. And I've got my deep thirds in the end zone. And I'm going to essentially go ahead and use her way, and it kind of reads he's got. This guy's going with heavy formations. QB contains, so if he chooses to go outside, um, I've got these guys should go ahead and, and go to the outside right here. 
So uh, he's looking um, probably for his money player right here. So this, these, these routes are all pretty much taken up. He can go ahead and come back to this route uh, with a running back, and this is taken away. Um, and he just he just forces the ball in, just as, just assuming that he can actually go ahead and get it past this guy. But because I'm playing the sticks, they're playing the sticks. And he throws it right to my user, or right to my CPU. And unfortunately, fortunately for me, I'm able to go ahead and get a stop against this guy and complete his drive. So, um, ranked 133, over 2,000 games played. Uh, this guy quits out. So once again, guys, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys picked up some pretty good tips on how I run my defense and uh, how I run my schemes. So uh, until next time.